Come on, we are the Hebrew Israelites. We come out every week to let the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Hispanics know who they are according to the Bible, which are the Most High's chosen people, which are known as Yasharala, also known as Israel in the earth. Okay? We come out every week to let our people know who they are. We also come to let Esau know that the Most High about to destroy this wicked ass kingdom, okay? All right. Go ahead and read that. Right. Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Right, so in the ancient times, when you go back to, uh, wait, let's go through it. Go back, hold that, go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 Now therefore if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine Verse 6 Wait notice it says ye shall be a peculiar people It also says that in Peter that we are a peculiar people Let you know that who Paul was going to talk to were Israel Paul and, and Peter, all the apostles, they were going to talk to the Israelites. And they were quoting things from the Old Testament. So go ahead. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. Oh, one more thing. It says, above all people. And that Israel was meant to be above all people. Didn't it? They're the top, the top nation. It's like Judah's the top tribe. Israel is the top nation on the earth. That's just the way the most I want it. There's nothing else to it. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Right. So get Peter's whole that. Get Peter's chapter 2, verse 9. Just, just so they can see. Where it comes from in the, in the New Testament. What? First Peter chapter two, verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Right now, can you give me that word? Um, peculiar. Get it in the Old Testament. Where was we at in the Old Testament? Exodus chapter 19, right? Where was it verse 5 or 6? Exodus 19 and 6, peculiar. I'm going to blue letter. Oh. Exodus 19 and what? 6. Children of Israel. The what? We're the children of Israel. So-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Hispanics go back to the people of Israel, according to the scripture. You know the chosen people? Chosen people in the scriptures. We're saying that the Negroes, Native Americans, and Hispanics are part of the chosen people that's in the Bible called Israel. So they're the chosen people on the earth. Old Testament. Can you get on Romans chapter 9? You're going to read Romans chapter 9 verse 1. The New Testament. Romans chapter 9 verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. The Israelites, go ahead. To whom pertaineth the adoption, it pertains to adoption, it pertains to Israel. And the glory. The glory, which is the kingdom. Go ahead. And the covenant. The covenant, which is the Old Testament, New Testament covenant. Go ahead. And the giving of the law. The law, hold on a second. Hold on. Go ahead. And the service of God.
God right, go ahead. and the promises. Hold on one second. I answer. Go ahead. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? So Jesus Christ came for the Israelites. Now what was your question, question about this? Because one of the Europeans Jesus also came to the Read that last part. To the flesh. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? Read the first verse so we know who he came for. Who pertained to Israel. Oh, God. Romans chapter 9 verse 4. I start at verse 3. My kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites. Skip down to that last verse you read. According to the flesh. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? Well, it's clear in the scriptures that Christ came for Israel. It's Israel. No, I don't want to be Europeans. It's Europeans. Are Europeans Israel? You have Negroes, you have West Indians, Dominicans, but you have nobody else on there that is white. And the fact is that God came to save all people who are under the law. Who are under that's a good thing you said that. Who was under the scriptures? It was still, it doesn't matter if you're white or black. Who was, because the funny part I know it don't matter if you're white matter, or black. But you know why? Nothing about Do you know that Miriam was white? Exactly. And so Moses, white, and Moses, so if, if, Moses if, if is black, Mary's right? Mary's white, wait. Miriam. Mary's white, why is there only Dominican, Spanish, and black people? Why is there nothing? Because no, white no, no. and black, because white and black I'm about to tell you, because white and black, because white and everybody. black, because white and black is not a race. White and black is not a race, that's why. It's not a race, it's a color. White and black is not a race, it's a color. Go ahead and read that. Well, matter of fact, let me say this. Why do every time white people come up, they feel like because they're not on the list, it's racist. You out here you are killing niggas every day. You ain't fine, you ain't standing up for them niggas. You ain't marching and running your Congress, but it's racist because you're not on the list, you're not included. You don't include niggas when you build this country up. When y'all split them million dollar deals, do you include niggas? You don't. So why you feel like we always gotta include you in everything we got, we, we doing? You ain't on his side because your ass is not an Israelite. Straight to the point. White people are not Israelites. And it ain't about no fucking skin color. Like I said, Miriam at one point was white. She had leprosy. Does that make her not an Israelite? No, it did not. It just made her skin white. So you're going to tell us about racism, but here it is. You're, you're dividing the earth along the lines of color which is not race. So you damn right, we ain't got no white people on here, according to what you say. You damn right, y'all not included, because we not dealing with colors. We dealing with nationalities. It's funny, because we was just reading, she talking about all the people that were under the scriptures. We just read that Israel sinned against the Most High, they didn't keep the laws, so they are under the curse. They didn't say no other nation. Go ahead and read it, bro. Matthew, one, Matthew 1, 25. Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. 21, my Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, we already know from context of the scriptures, going back to the Old Testament, and what we read in Romans chapter 9, his people is Israel, man. It's easy. He can't even save his people. It's that simple. You read Deuteronomy chapter 7. No, go back to that covenant one. We gotta go back to that. It was in Exodus chapter 19. Right, so you still want the dictionary? Um, you got it? Go ahead and read it, yeah. For which word again? Peculiar. Exodus 19 and 6? Yeah. Sure, it was 6. What is it? Verse 
verse 6 or verse 6? It's verse 6. It's uh, 19 verse, uh, chapter 19 verse 6. Exodus? Yeah. yeah. What the fuck is this? Oh, you said peculiar. Yeah. Peculiar is in uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. Oh, okay. Let me the see. The priesthood is in uh, 19 and 6. Oh, okay. Read on, um, Exodus 19 and 6 again. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests yeah. and a an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right, go ahead and read that up. Um, Second Peter. We'll kill you. Yeah, read it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness. That ye should do what? That he... That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness. Right. Into his marvelous light. Right. Go ahead, bro. Got it? Yeah. Ice. Ice. It says, um, uh, the root word, a primary preposition. Um, and is this the right word? Peculiar, right? Yeah, peculiar. A primary preposition into, unto, to, towards, for, among. That's for peculiar? I have to look that, look into that. Yeah, okay. that's crazy. That's the Greek, right? That's the Greek, yeah. Did you get the uh, Old Testament? Is it in the Old Type in peculiar, see if it's in the Old Testament. Yeah. Seven and six, right? Yeah. Yeah, get that in the Old Testament. It says, Gula. All right, brothers. What's going on, right. bro? Appreciate you, man. All right, all right. Um, from an unused root, meaning to shut up. Possession, property, value, property, peculiar treasure. It's intertwined with treasure, man. Right. Basically, we belong to the Most High. All the other nations, they do what the fuck they want to. But Israel is the Most High's possession. Feminine passive participle of an unused root meaning to shut up wealth as closely shut up. Jewel, peculiar treasure, proper good, special. Good, special. Alright, so go ahead and finish reading that cover. It's English. Whack, Exodus though. chapter 19, verse yep. 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Keep going. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak, speak so I can, unto the children of Israel. Keep going. Verse seven, and Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Keep going. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto Yahweh Shem Yahweh Right. So our people made a covenant with the Most High. And then we read in Daniel that they broke that covenant. All right. 
Where you at? Good. Good. Yeah, you have more dang. If you have more than you can go there. If not, go to um, Blue Army Chapter 7. Talking about when we went into the land of Canaan, of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 3 Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. All right, go ahead. For they will turn away thy son from following thee, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. How did they go on? But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. Right. Go. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Once again, you see that same thing again. The Most High chose Israel to be a special people, above everybody, all right? So he don't care, he didn't care to come and save everybody else. He came to save Israel, man. Like he sent his son on the earth to save Israel, and, and it's for a reason. It's because Israel is the priest. He said it, to be a holy nation, a priesthood of, on the earth, man. A kingdom of priests on the earth, okay? Go ahead, bro. Verse 7 The Lord did not set his love upon you Nor choose you Because you were more in number than any people For ye were the fewest of all people But because Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai loved you And because he would keep the oath Which he had sworn unto your father Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai Brought you out with that mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bond men from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Right, that's it. Give me Luke chapter, uh, give me Luke chapter one, verse like uh, 20. Luke chapter one, verse 20. Luke chapter 1, start at verse 3, verse 54. Luke chapter 1, verse 54. Start at 49. Luke chapter 1, verse 49. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Who is them of low degree? Israel. Who is them that was in the mighty sits? It's the heathens, man. Mainly Esau. All right, that's who was ruling at the time Yahweh was put on the cross. Go ahead. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. What's the good things? The truth. Salvation. Alright, go ahead. He hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. He helped Israel because he remembered the scriptures being possessive. He said that raised up a horn of salvation for us. Who is the us? This is Zacharias prophesying, which is John's father. The us is Israel, obviously. Go ahead. Verse 71. 
That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from who? Our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Who is our enemies? At that time, it was the Roman Empire. Who was the Roman Empire ruled by? It was ruled by the Edomites. The Edomites are our enemies. All right. Matter of fact, what is it? Psalm chapter uh, eight, uh, no, eighty-nine. No. Um. Tomo. Yeah. You got the Tomo against our people. I think it's Psalm eighty-nine, right? Eighty-three. Go ahead. Yeah. Read that. Psalms chapter 83, verse 2. Right. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy enemies. Right. You said they, thy enemies. Thy enemies. Crafty, um, crafty counsel against thy people. Go ahead, read off the list. You see who the first one on the list is. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now the name of Israel is Yashar Allah. It's not, it's not Israel. It's Yashar Allah. All right? It's not Yehudi. It's Yashar Allah. That name is not in remembrance in the earth. We're the only people that use that name. So they, they strove to cut our name out of the earth. They strove to make us no more a nation. And they, and they successfully did it. Our people are not a nation. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 83, verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Right. The tabernacles of Edom. Edom. First, first one on the list. Now we told you Edom is the so-called white man. What people call Caucasian. They're the first ones. That's why they're so quick to take who you call Jesus Christ and say, oh, he came for everybody. Go ahead. And the Ishmaelites, of, and the Ishmaelites, like this. Ishmaelites, the Arabs. Oh. You ain't even got to read no more. That's it. Go back. We go. Right. It's basically all the nations. Starting with Edom. Starting with Edom. Go ahead, I'll go back to Luke. Luke. Chapter 1, verse 68. Hallelujah. Blessed be Yahweh Shem Yahushai, the power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He redeemed his people. Re means again. They were never his people. It tells you that what in Isaiah or Jeremiah, they were never called by that name. And the other nations were never his people. He redeemed us. He regathered us. Go ahead. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Right, who is that? That's who he called Yahweh. Go ahead. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet, which have been since the world began. See, this is an old prophecy that's being fulfilled in the New Testament. That's being spoken of in the New Testament. This goes back to the Old Testament. All right, go ahead. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from what? Our enemies. See, that's the whole thing. That is what people don't understand. They keep saying, oh, yeah. what do you say from? How do you say from sin? Oh, you just can't say everybody. From what? From sin. No. Why do you come to save certain people from sin? So that they can serve the Most High. I'm going to tell you later on in the scripture. So that they can serve the Most High. Without, and so that they won't be in slavery to the other nations. They're enemies. So you see these, these people, they don't understand the scriptures, man. They don't understand the why. Go ahead, bro. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Now, let me ask you something. You look on the TV. Does it look like the so-called white man love us? Does it look like he's he's madly in love with our people? Oh, you need to uh huh? Does does it look like the Arab is madly in love with our people? Huh? Nobody in love with our people. They all hate our people. So the most I had to deliver us 
from the people that hate us, man. And how did he do that? He had to first take away our sins. He had to clear our sins. He had to send his son to clear our sins so that he can come back and rekindle with us. So we could be redeemed back to him. That's why we had to be saved from our sins. Not just because oh, it's sinful and no, we had to be saved from our sins so that we can be redeemed and rekindled back towards the Most High. And so that the Most High can set the earth in order with the people that he had, that he had, that he had appointed to be the priests of the earth, to set the order, the earth straight. Now you gotta understand this thing, man. Go ahead, bro. Uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which he swore to our father Abraham right all this go back to what he promised our forefathers he didn't promise this to Edom he didn't promise this to, uh, uh, to Ishmael he promised it to Israel Verse 74 That he would grant unto us That we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies Might serve him without fear Read that again Verse 74 Luke chapter 1 Verse 74 That he would grant unto us That we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies Might serve him without fear Right And that's the whole point of it Go ahead in holiness and righteousness before him all the, the days of our life. Which Trump guy he's from? Guy in these. Guy in these, yeah. So West Indies, right? West Indies, so Benjamin? Yeah. That's a wolf? That's yeah. a wolf? Wolf, yeah. Go ahead. So like Luke chapter 1, verse 70. I'll start at 74. That he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. That's the whole point. That we would be saved, we would be saved from our enemies, so that we could serve him. Now in America, we can't fully serve him. We got laws against certain things that you that you uh they were supposed to do. Like which one of your brothers going to go out? Put blood on your doorpost. Right. Who about to do that? Which one of you brothers finna not show up to work on the Sabbath? Right. Huh? You can't. So we can't fully serve the most high. Furthermore, the nation's not gonna listen to you because you have no power. So you can't fully serve the most high. You can't teach the nation how to worship the most high. You don't got no power. They're not finna listen to you. So we needed to be delivered from our enemies, from the heathen that had us in captivity, so that we could serve the Most High. That, that's the point of Yahweh Shah coming. It kills me because these people, they claim they know, I know Jesus, I know the Bible, and they want to come up, or, up here like the lady and tell us what the fuck they think is real. All right, and none of this shit is real. We got the scriptures right here, breaking it down. What they're doing is, they regurgitate shit that they heard inside the church. Somebody told them without without reading them and proving it to them. Alright, go ahead, bro. Luke chapter 1, verse 74. That he will grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Hold up. Go to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 14 through 18. 14 through 18. That's the point of Israel being the chosen people. It ain't because Israel can jump high, or they the prettiest people on the earth, or they the smartest, or they the biggest people on the earth. It's because the Most High promised certain things to our forefathers because He loved our forefathers. And because he appointed us to do a certain job in the earth 
and he would see that job to be done by the people that he appointed to do it. Go ahead, bro. Zephaniah chapter 3. 14. 14 to 18. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 14. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all thy heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Yahweh by Shimei Oshai hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. He hath did what? Cast out thine enemy. Like he's saying, the enemy, casting them out. That's the point. Guess what? The enemy and the enemies are not the devil. Oh, the devil. The enemies are the other nations that prevent us from doing what we got to do. They have. Go ahead. The king of Israel, even the Lord, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. Verse 17. Yahweh Shemel Shai, thy power in the midst is in the midst of thee, is mighty. Verse 17. Yahweh Shemel Shai, thy power in the midst of thee is mighty. He will say, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Right. Verse 18. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the, for the solemn assembly. Right. Who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Let me go back to Luke. The one in uh, 74, Luke to 75. Matter of fact, go all the way to 77. Matter of fact. Let's read to the end. Luke chapter 1, verse 74. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. Right, right, go ahead. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Right. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people. Exactly, give knowledge of salvation to the people. And that's, that's what we're doing as well. Go ahead. By the remission of their sins. Exactly, go ahead. Through the tender mercy of our power, right. whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, right. to give light to them that sit in darkness. Who sit in darkness? Israel, our people. Go ahead. And in the shadow of death, to guide right. our feet into the way of peace. Right. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. That's it. All right, so go to uh, Isaiah chapter 43. We'll read that whole chapter. Isaiah chapter 43. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that born thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Right. Go ahead. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Go ahead. For I am the Lord thy power, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Go ahead. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sable for thee. Go ahead. Since thou was was precious in my sight. You gotta read so loud, bro. You can bring it down. It's time to lose your voice. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore I will give men for thee and the people for thy life. Read that one more time. Isaiah chapter 43, 
verse 4. Says, Thou was precious in my sight. Thou has been honorable, and I have loved thee. Come right here, bro, so they can give you a little better. Take my Isaiah chapter 43, verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Right, like I said before, this is a love story between Israel and the Most High. All right? Not with everybody else. Where he loved all the other nations. That ain't it. That's not what it's about. The most I love Israel so much, he said he sat here to give up other people for Israel. He sacrificed other people for Israel, man. Go ahead. Fear not. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Verse 6. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Meaning that he's going to deliver us. Go ahead. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. Right. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Read that again. I did what? I formed him for what? I have formed him. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes. He said he made us for his glory, man. Now, I want you to tell me, in the scriptures, what other nations does it, does it mention that the Most High made them for his glory? Because if I remember correctly, I don't remember him other than Israel. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 8 Bring forth the blind people that have eyes And the deaf that have ears Let all the nations be gathered together And let the people be assembled Who among them can declare this And show us former things Let them bring forth their witnesses that they might be justified or let them hear and say it is true. Wait, hold on. But I thought Jesus came to save them. Why would they need witnesses to come stand for them? He didn't say nothing about Israel needing a witness. Go ahead. Verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh Shimei Shai, and my servant of whom I have chosen. Where you at? Where you at? How much time? How much time? It's hard to tell. It's the third, third clip. <laughs> Chapter uh, verse fifty-three. Second Edges chapter six, verse fifty-three. Upon the sixth day, thou gavest commandment unto the earth that before thee it should bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping things. Right. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O, o Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us. I'm sorry, bro. Stop, stop. Go back like two or three verses. I'm sorry. Second Nedris chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also, 
whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, right. and and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So the Most High made all the people on the earth, all the people came from Adam, and he chose these one people. Go ahead. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. He says he made the world for our sakes. Go ahead. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, the other people, no, it's just a different separation. Go ahead. Thou hast said that they are nothing. It's the most I said they're nothing. Why would he care about them like that? He said they're nothing. Why would he care about the Edomite? When he said the Edomites are nothing. Right. Why would he care so much about the Edomites to save them? To from all the bad shit they did in the earth. To send them a savior. Save the other people he don't care about. But we read in, in the scriptures that he loves Israel. We read that over and over and over. And that Israel has an appointed job. So he sends his son to save Israel. It's simple. Go ahead, bro. But be like unto spittle and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. He said he liked them to spit, man. Why would he say that shit? That's the most invaluable thing on the earth. He didn't say gold. As a matter of fact, he said he liked them on the spittle. Now, hold that. Give me the book of Lamentations. Let's see what he likened, uh, Jake. Let's see what he likens uh, the children of Israel to. Give me Lamentations, chapter uh, 45. Let's see what the most I like the children of Israel to in contrast. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 1. How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. The precious sons of Zion, what? precious sons of Zion, right. comparable to fine gold. Comparable to what? Fine gold. So you got, you got Israel, the chosen people, fine gold. And then you got the other people, as, as uh, Ezra says, that the most I said the other people are likely to spit them. Spit. So which one is valuable and which one is not? Gold is valuable. If you lose some gold, you're going to turn your, your house and wherever you at, you're going to turn that shit upside down trying to find that gold. But if some spit fall out of your mouth, you ain't going to give a fuck about that. No, keep on walking. Fuck that shit. But if your gold tooth, tooth fall out your mouth, you're going to look for that. It just is what it is. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 2. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold. How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? Give me Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 27. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 27. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the power of Israel, Drink ye and be drunken, and spew and fall and rise no more because of the, of the sword which I will send among you. Yeah, he's talking, to, talking mainly to Esau. Go ahead. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall certainly drink. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm sorry. Give me Malachi chapter 1. I love you. Malachi. Yeah, we brought that on Chapter 1. I love you, said the Lord. So verse 4. Contrast that, right? 
Malachi chapter 1, verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Right. Moses says he loved Israel, man. Israel want to know where, where is it? Like, how is it? So, go ahead. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, right. saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau. He hated Esau, man. Okay, Esau. So, I mean, it's it's simple. The most I love Israel. He okay, hate Esau, man. Right. He hate the other nations. I ain't gonna say. We know he hates Esau. He don't care for the other nations. Basically, he's not the most I's main concern. His main concern is that gold. Because, believe it or not, that gold called Israel is gonna set the earth in order. That's the tool that the most is gonna use to set the earth in order, man. Did he ever say he gave a fuck about the other nations? I never read what he said he gave a fuck about the other nations. I read that he cared for the, the other nations, but he don't have to give a fuck about them to care for them. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, where you at, bro? Give me your go back to, uh, uh Isaiah chapter 43 verse 9 Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled Who among them can declare this? and right. show us former things. Right. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Wait, hold on now. <laughs> How is Israel justified in their sins? How? Through Yahweh He said that, let, he said for the other nations, <laughs> let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. He's not even talking about Israel. Israel is not included in the group that must bring forth their witnesses to be justified. Yahweh shall ain't come for them. Isaiah chapter 43. That was an ancient <laughs> Verse 9. Let all the... <laughs> They all wet. They all wet. They fucked up, man. Yeah, they are. Fucked they around are. the other nations. Yep. Exactly. What do you say? He that joint unto them too, man? No, they be joined hand in hand. Yeah. They, all of that is going to be destroyed. Right. You can't be fucking around with no wet. And you, and, and you, and you, you Negroes out there. Yep. Right. You Negroes out there think you, you know, you join hand in hand with the system. Yeah. And with Esau, with the other nations and all that shit. Your ass gonna be destroyed right along with them. You ain't nothing but a heathen. You gonna get the reward of the heathens, man. Your ass gonna be destroyed. You gonna die on this side. Isaiah chapter 43. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified, but let them hear and say, it is true. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant wh whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he, before me there is no power formed. He ain't trying to prove himself to the other nations. Like once again, the Most High does not care about the other nations. He's not trying to prove himself to the other nations. He's proving himself to Israel, and Israel is going to show the other nations the Most High in the kingdom. Once again, the Most High don't care about the other nations. They're not they're relevant at this point. Go ahead. 
Verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange power among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh Bashim Shai, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. There is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Shai, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles. Mosiah is going to destroy Babylon for our sake. He said that early in the verses. He destroyed Israel for, uh, he de not Israel, he destroyed Egypt for our sake, for Israel's sake. Every nation that was destroyed, he did it for Israel's sake. And his last rulership is going to be destroyed, Mosiah is going to destroy it for the sake of Israel. Because these people are not going to kill us, man. They're not going to kill us off like they want to. Okay. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. Chaldeans would be the, uh, the elites. The elite banking family. I am Yahweh Shimei Awashai, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. What? The creator of Israel, <laughs> your king. He ain't say of all the nations either. Go ahead. 